So here's the back end of a uh, 1973 Montgomery Ward Gilson hydrostatic 16 horse yard tractor, garden tractor, uh, whatever you want to call it. If you uh, have been watching my videos a while, you'll know that I have an identical twin to this 73 Gilson tractor uh, up at the cattle ranch property that I have. And uh, about a, I don't know, about a year ago or so, I found this one, which is an identical, identical twin, which was just lightning strikes twice. I think that was the video that I called it because uh, I had looked for years for a powerful little hydrostatic tra tra uh, tractor, hydrostatic transmission tractor. And uh, well, anyway, after many years of searching, I found one and then uh, in my hands fell another one about a year later. So a year, year and a half later. Anyhow, the nice thing about it is I have one here at my house here in the city, and then I have its identical twin up at the ranch. So I'm able to fabricate things here uh, in the city, and then when I go up to the ranch, I'm able to just bolt it right onto that little tractor and go, go, go. The most recent example was the Cub Cadet snow blower that I bought uh, in January, February of this year. Maybe it was February of this year. And uh, I fabricated it up all to this tractor here in the city, and then when I brought it up there to the ranch house, it uh, just bolted on, and it was beautiful, and it made me happy. I did a little dance. Uh, but what am I doing? I'm getting ready for winter. Getting ready for winter. And while winter down here in the city is just cold and rain, winter up there is uh, pretty good snow. We're at about 4,600 feet, and we get quite a bit of snow up there on the mountain. So... Um, Again, if you've been watching and your scorecard is handy, you'll remember that I built a weight rack for the original Gilson tractor. And it was a kind of a hybrid, and you know how I feel about hybrids, but it was a hybrid weight bar slash tow bar because it seemed to, uh, it seemed like it was a good idea at the time. However, however, the downside was, and, and I'll show you, I'll walk over there and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Shut up, dog. The, the downside was that I had originally designed it this way uh, where it would bolt onto the back of the tractor and then I slid these concrete weights that weigh about 40 pounds a piece. I have four of them, they're these round weights with holes in the center and they slide over the poles, rest right here and they would sit over each tire, which I thought was a good idea. It'd give me a nice wide weight stance uh, over each tire, nice stable, thing dealy deal the problem is is the ball and you can see already uh, there there was a there was a minor issue um, in December yeah I know it took me almost a year to get this fixed but uh, last December I was moving around that big trailer that I have up there at the ranch house for the sawmill and the problem is or was when the ball was right here that if you're making a tight turn to move things around and uh, you got a little too tight the trailer would hit the bar and it would tweak it up So this thing sat it used to sit like this and I was making a turn the trailer came around and bumped this under This got caught under a tire and just torqued it um, Yeah, so it took a while to get that unhooked. I guess my welds were good because my welds didn't break but uh, Anyway, I got the pins out I was able to get this off. I ended up cutting this off of the tow ball assembly and now I'm going to build two separate assemblies to have. The one up there already has the tow ball. I left that up there. I brought this weight rack home for me to figure out what the hell I'm going to do. Uh, yeah, it's no longer going to be a towing bar. Um, so my thinking is, since this is going to have about 160 pounds of weight on it, plus the weight of this, that it'll probably hold itself in there pretty good. So I want to build a bracket that's going to capture the top holes, two of the top holes here in the little hookup, and then maybe kind of rest on itself here. I don't want to have to deal with pins or anything like that. That's just more stuff for me to lose. So uh, I've got a couple preliminary ideas in my head, and if you know me, I kind of build it as I go. I don't really have a plan, um, and I like to use what I have on hand, and here's my thinking, and when all said and done, let's see how close my thinking is to the finished product. I have this weird handle thing. I think this is from an old chop saw, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this is some kind of wood rack, if I'm not mistaken, that used to sit this way, so your material would ride that way on some old chop saw somewhere, I think. I think uh, this is some old uh, 
ProGuard Industries clamp that used to clamp for a um, rack that would go on the roof of a car. This would clamp into the edge of the gutters. And I have a few of these laying around and I got a few of these laying around. But my thinking is that I'd bend 90s in here because this is just about the right width for these outer holes. And I'd be able to just kind of bring it up under, slip the pins down into the top holes. This is going to rest again. It's just going to butt up there like this. Is that right? Yeah. So somehow this is going to weld or talk to itself like that. Okay, so this whole thing will stay like that. And then I'm thinking I'm going to attach, weld uh, this to that. And this will get the weights. The weights I'm going to bring inboard, uh, they don't need to stick out over the wheels. Because then actually they were getting in the way of the chains as well a little bit. Because I had put them up really tight. Um, so they're going to come sit about like that, I think. I don't know. We'll see. All right, well, um, let's start cutting and bending and bending and cutting. And uh, I'll show you here in a few minutes what I have going on. So as I typically do, I kind of had a change of plans. Uh, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but I'm going to tack it all together and, uh, and see. This is what I'm thinking. Originally, I was going to come over the top. So I took this bracket and I bent a couple right there. I was going to come over the top and hook the top holes, have this thing, this bracket here set like this, right? I would weld it across there, and I cut off all the twisted here, and then I ground some pretty decent bevels. I was going to butt weld this together like that, and then weld this in here like this. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any of those weights here at the house, so I'm not, I don't remember quite what the diameter is, but I figure if it fits from here to here, I left at least that much space to here, right? And I did the same over here. So um, it tucks it in closer. Oh, and I don't think I mentioned the first part of the video. Once I wrecked this, um, I had hooked on the rototiller to the back of this thing. Because uh, the rototiller weighs about 165, 170 pounds, something like that. It was really nice because the rototiller sticks out about two and a half feet from the back. So it really balanced the tractor well. The bad part is, is I had another two and a half feet off the back of the tractor and um, making turns at the end of the road and getting kind of around tight areas with trees and cars and whatnot. I didn't want all that bulk back here to run into things. So uh, in kind of a weird kind of way, this may actually work better. However, um, what I changed, back to, the, back to the matter at hand, what I ended up changing was I think, and I think this will work, and I don't know, I'm gonna weld it together and see. I think I'm gonna do an under hook, right? Where I come in and I tip the whole thing up like that. I hook it under and then have it lock into itself, which what that does, let's see if I can display this. Okay, what that does is it makes a nicer platform right here, right? Because I'm gonna weld it so that's all the way up. And it's gonna sit about like that. And then I can take this weight, which is gonna be you know, what did I say? They're, they're close to 40 pounds, a, a chunk. And I'll be able to weld it uh, like right about there, wherever it's level. And it'll sit like that. And what that'll do is that'll give me a nice handle to grab it. And then I should be able to rotate it up and to unhook it and take it off. And then just by the sheer weight of all that, all that concrete, those little wheels on here, um, that'll lock itself into place. So, let me get out the old miller and I'm gonna stick weld this and I'll bring you guys back here in just a minute and we'll see how it does tack together. Huh. Huh. That's what I came up with. tripod today Ooh, it's fancy so fancy is it perfectly square no was it ever perfectly square no it was some cobbled together mess that came with the tractor originally when it had the tow bar hooked onto it that I kind of cobbled on those little L brackets and the pipes uh, so in keeping with that crooked theme I didn't even uh, I didn't really care however think we're in pretty decent shape actually let's see I haven't even tested should be able to get it off let's see oh hell yeah 
no tools, no pins. Um, yeah, you just come underneath, you hook, holds itself in there, about as solid as that's gonna get. And then you slide the, the four wheel concrete type weights. Um, yeah, some of my wells look nice. I started with that one. That one's ugly. <laughs> oh well. I had cut a pretty big bevel and then to get this lined up, because I am only slightly caring that it is level, um, I had to bridge a gap, so I had to make a couple passes there. Two passes, that's still pretty warm. Um, two passes there, and uh, it filled a little too much, but what are you going to do? Yeah, there's some kind of ball game or something going on. But that's cool. I make my noise, so my neighbors can make their noise. See, these welds came out all right. That one, bleh, that was my first one. I had to warm up a little bit. Uh, but then by the time I got to here, we did all right. So, yeah. See, that'll work. Let's squirt a little color on that. Oop. There it goes. That'll work. I'll uh, squirt a little paint on there. Um, yeah, and move on to snow chains. Thanks for watching. See ya.